Protex presents a series of videos on dealing with switches of MES-14 and 24 series. These devices are designed to connect end-users in the operator and enterprise networks and perform a wide range of necessary functions, the most of them we are going to illustrate in the scope of our videos. Today we will perform the initial configuration of a switch, the connection of the switch. In this video we will get a view of the options for connecting to the switch and initial configuration. To connect to the switch, you can use RS-232 console port or connect to it over IP protocol via Telnet agent. The default IP address is 192.168.1.239. Each time you turn on the switch, the device initialization process occurs, after which you need to pass the authorization procedure to continue the work on the switch. The default username for MES-1424 series switches is admin with password admin. We take MES-2428 switch as an example. Connect the switch to the PC via the console cable. To configure the device, you need to use the terminal program. For the Windows operation system, you can use PuTTY. It is an open access terminal program. We will demonstrate you how to configure the switch using it. To connect to the switch, the terminal program should have the following configuration. So you should select the appropriate serial port, set the data transfer rate to 115200 baud, Set the data format equal to 8-bit, define one stop bit without parity control, disable software and hardware flow management. After configuring the terminal program, connect to the switch, enter login admin and password admin. So that we can get into the command line of the device. First, let's look at current network settings on the switch by tuning the command show IP interface. VLAN 1 is up, line protocol is down. Internet address is zeros, broadcast address is 255 four times. IP address allocation method is dynamic, IP address allocation protocol is DHCP. Secondary address is 192.168.1.239/24. VLAN count is disabled. By default, on the VLAN 1 interface, the IP address is 192.168.1.239 with subnet mask 24 and DHCP client is enabled. If your network has a DHCP server, then the switch can get new network settings over DHCP. As soon as new IP address has been assigned, after any interface via DHCP or statically, the switch is no longer accessible by default IP address. After successful connection, enter the default login admin and password admin. Now we go to the command line of the switch, where we can perform the required settings. Close the session and turn back to the first session, from which the command show IP interface was put. Configuring the switch. Assign the static IP address 192.168.1.30 to the VLAN 1 interface and the default gateway 192.168.1.10. To do this, perform the following settings in the command line of the switch. Put in the command to enter the global configuration mode. Put in the command to enter VLAN 1 configuration mode. Then assign IP address 192.168.1.20. Enter the default gateway 192.168.1.10. All switch ports and factory configuration are in VLAN 1 in general mode. The basic configuration of the switch includes creating an account. For example, let's create an account with login altex and password pass. To do that, enter the following comments in the command line. Username altex password pass, privilege 15. View the current configuration in the non-volatile memory, run the command show running config. After executing this command, we clearly see that device configuration is changed. To see the change settings, enter the command show IP interface. Now we see that new IP address has been assigned. After editing the settings, save the configuration to the non-volatile memory. To save the configuration, run the command write startup config. We checked that the configuration file was successfully saved. You can also save the configuration to the remote TFTP server. To do this, use the copy command. To save the running config to the TFTP server, and the command copy running config.
To save the startup config file, run the command copy startup config. With the help of commands in this section, you can load the firmware to an active software image of the switch and then update it. Let's perform the command to download the firmware from a remote TFTP server. Firmware downloading from a remote FTP server is attended with a display of download percentages in the console. When you reach 100%, a message about operation success appears in the console log file. If a message about operation success appears, it means that the firmware has been installed in the non-active software image. You can check this with the command show boot var. After restarting with the command of the load, the firmware becomes active, which is represented by the line active after reboot. In the same manner you can copy the boot file. Let's proceed to the configuring the switch's ports operation mode. By default, all ports belong to VLAN 1 in general mode. Interface can operate in three modes – access and tagged interface for a single VLAN, trunk – in this mode the interface accepts only tagged traffic with exception of one assigned native VLAN, and general – interface that accepts both tagged and untagged traffic. To change the port operation mode, open the interface settings and switch the port operation mode to the required. For example, we will switch the Gigabit Ethernet port 1 to access mode for VLAN 2, the Gigabit Ethernet port 2 to trunk mode, the Gigabit Ethernet port 3 to general mode for VLAN 3. Let's create and activate VLAN 2 and VLAN 3. Then we switch the Gigabit Ethernet port 1 to access mode and add it to the VLAN. The Gigabit Ethernet port 2 is switched in trunk mode. After switching, the interface passes all tagged traffic in active VLANs. The Gigabit Ethernet port 3 is switched to general mode for VLAN 3. When the configuration is complete, save the configuration to the non-volatile memory by the command write startup config. To restart the switch, run the reload command.
We have observed the initial connection and configuration of all text switches. If you have any questions, you can contact the Otex Service Center.